Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremp 2 News at 11 tonight. Let's get started. The city's plan to put a new homeless shelter in a vacant building off East Trent hit yet another snag. First, the city council voted against a zoning change for the building. Then last night, the city announced it was restarting the process of selecting who would operate the shelter, citing a conflict of interest. Krem 2's Kyle Simchuk in the newsroom tonight with more from the mayor. Mayor Woodward does not know what the timeline is, only that the shelter will be delayed. We also talked with former City Council President Ben Stuckert. He says he notified the city about his conflict of interest and doesn't believe he did anything wrong. After looking at roughly 100 sites, Mayor Nadine Woodward says this building on East Trent is still the best option for a new homeless shelter. The question that remains is who will operate it. I don't know what the timeline is now. I'll just tell you that the shelter will be delayed. Three organizations submitted their own proposals, which were evaluated by the city's Continuum of Care Board. Former City Council President Ben Stuckert is the board chair, and he's also listed as a project manager for Jules Helping Hands, one of the organizations trying to score that city contract. He should not have been part of the discussion about who that provider was going to be. Stuckert says there was a conflict of interest on his part, and he told the city on March 31st and mentioned it during several meetings. He also recused himself from voting on a shelter operator. If they thought I should keep my mouth shut in the meeting, then they should have said something over the last three weeks instead of scheduling their meetings around me. The mayor's office announced they are restarting the selection process and creating a new committee to review organizations. The city's very angry, Nadine's very angry that her proposal didn't get rubber stamped by the continuum of care. We have people on the street right now, and all of them lose in this political battle. Many people living at the homeless camp off I-90 in Freya say they don't want to be in a shelter with hundreds of other homeless people. They want their own space, even if it's just a tent. The DOT field is not humane for people who are unhoused. People are dying in those tents from overdoses. Once more shelter beds are available, the city will have the authority to remove homeless camps. But again, if, if those people in the tent say, I want to be in a tent, we want to be in a, in a tent city. Yeah, we're not, we're, not, we're not sanctioning. The city of Spokane, under, under my leadership, is not sanctioning tent cities. This wasn't the only roadblock for the shelter this week. On Monday, city council members couldn't pass an emergency zoning ordinance needed for the shelter site on Trent. Council President Brian Begg says the council could decide to revisit the topic soon. In the newsroom, Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. Now to our night beat with a quick look at the day's top stories. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office is raising money to buy ring doorbell cameras for survivors of sexual assault. Because a lot of times that power has been taken from them. And they have said that they would benefit from having a surveillance system on the exterior of their house uh, just to give them a sense of security. And the Spokane County Sheriff's Office Sexual Assault Unit is running the fundraiser since April is Sexual Assault Awareness Month. According to the Spokane County Sheriff's Office, even if a sexual assault perpetrator is arrested, they are often released without bond while pending trial and oftentimes with limited supervision. Detective Brad Humphrey, who you just heard from there, hopes to raise enough money to buy at least 10 ring doorbell cameras, but he says they'll buy as many as they can afford with the money that they are able to raise. The fundraiser runs until the end of the month. For a link to that GoFundMe page, just head to our website. That's creme.com. An Idaho judge has set the date for the murder trial of Lori Vallow for October 11th. This comes after Vallow declined to waive her right to a speedy trial at her arraignment yesterday. Vallow and her husband, Chad Daybell, are accused of murdering her two children, 16-year-old Tylee Ryan and 7-year-old J.J. Vallow. During her arraignment yesterday, Vallow stood silent, prompting the judge to enter not guilty pleas on her behalf. Prosecutors are seeking the death penalty for Daybell, but have not yet indicated what punishment they'll seek for Vallow. A new COVID-19 testing location opened in Hayden on Monday, as reported by our news partners, the Coeur d'Alene Press. It is the first site in North Idaho for public health service startup Curative, which has dozens of sites in Washington, including right here in Spokane. The testing trailer is in the parking lot north of the Prairie Shopping Center between the Hayden Library and the Hayden Discount Cinema. The tests are free and the hours are from 11 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000. We'll send them directly to your phone. All right, let's talk weather now because so far this week we have seen rain, breezing conditions, even some sunshine. Let's get outside right now to Chief Meteorologist Jeremy Lagoo. And Jeremy, what can folks expect when they wake up tomorrow morning? 
Uh, this rain to be winding down. It is raining right now and the rain is only going to pick up from here. We have some of those showers here in Spokane. You can see them on the roads. It's here on the South Hill and it's keeping temperatures mild. 47 degrees right now here in town, 49 in Coeur d'Alene and 46 there in Sandpoint. Still in the low 40s out in Moses Lake and Wenatchee and that rain's moving through. You can see the backside of this first round, but look, more is coming in from the south, so expect more of it as we head through the remainder of the night and early tomorrow morning. Putting in motion, you can see rain moves in. We'll see another batch move through early in the morning, and then we start to dry out, and it's scattered showers heading through the day. Heaviest rain looks to arrive in the middle of the night and then taper off by tomorrow. I do think we wind up seeing some breaks in it as we head through the day. Scattered showers and cool temps for our Thursday. Hi, right, Jeremy, thanks so much. Turning to the ongoing war in Ukraine, Ukrainian civilians remain trapped in the decimated southern port city of Mariupol as it comes under relentless Russian attack. This comes as evacuation efforts stalled and with time running out. Ukrainian forces are holed up in this massive steel mill, continued to put up what is likely to be Mariupol's last stand. Meanwhile, Russia reported the first successful test launch inside its territory of a new type of intercontinental ballistic missile. The nuclear-capable weapon does not appear to be ready for use, but Russian President Vladimir Putin warned it is designed to overcome any missile defense system and make those who threaten Russia, quote, Think twice. The Justice Department is filing an appeal seeking to overturn a Florida judge's order that voided the federal mask mandate on public transit. The CDC said in a statement today that it will continue to assess whether an order requiring masking on indoor transportation is necessary for public health. For more information on this story, just head to our website, krem.com. Asking their pilots to fly record amounts of overtime on their off days in order to get our passengers safely uh, to their destinations is, is, is problematic. If there's no wiggle room, there's no buffer. Meanwhile, the current mask policy does not mean that air travel has gotten any smoother. Labor tensions and high demand are causing delays and cancellations at SeaTac and airports all across the country. Off-duty Delta pilots picketed in front of the airport yesterday to send a message that they are fatigued and frustrated. The pilots claim they are facing longer days and shorter rest periods and say the airlines are only concerned with filling seats on their planes. In a statement, a Delta spokesperson wrote, quote, pilot schedules remain in line with all requirements set by the FAA, as well as those outlined in our pilot contract. Several major cell phone companies in the U.S. were reporting service issues earlier today. Here's a live look at the website called downdetector.com. It's a site where users can report outages. As you can see, it was showing that big spike in Verizon outages here in Spokane at around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Things have since improved dramatically. T-Mobile, AT&T, and U.S. Cellular customers were also reporting outages at that same time. We did reach out to Verizon today. They cited a fiber issue at the network as the cause of the disruption. By the way, if you are still having problems, Verizon urges you to restart your phone. All right, now to a story that we're working on for Krem 2 News tomorrow. Spokane police officers are getting help from an unlikely source, local middle school students. It is a story that is Inland Northwest. Kim Taylor's engineering students at Sacagawea Middle School have been coming up with solutions for problems that police face in the field. They have used CAD programs and 3D printers to create grasping mechanisms for the bomb squad robot so it can do things like pick up keys and open doors. And more recently, they designed and developed a piece of equipment that allows the SWAT team to use their drone in situations where it can't fly. It's essentially a 3D printed box that holds the drone and mounts on that extendable pole so officers can use the drone's cameras to search tight spaces like attics and crawl spaces. Police say the student's creation works really well. It was incredible to see them get to be faced with a, with a real world problem and then all the way through from design to printing to actually being able to watch that, that clip from the RV and see things that they had created in their classroom at the middle school level actually used for real life stuff. Well, Krem 2 was there last month as the SWAT team used the middle schooler's creation to search that RV where a robbery suspect was holed up inside. It allowed them to use the drone's thermal imaging camera to see exactly where the suspect was hiding at the time. So we will hear more from the students behind the creation, their teacher and police coming up tomorrow on Krem 2 News at 6. All right, don't go to bed just yet. He was recently convicted of killing his ex-wife in Brown's edition. But months before that murder, investigators say Nathan Beal killed another man as practice. We'll talk exclusively with the victim's family 
coming up in just 90 seconds.